Hey, what's up YouTube? Today we are going to do a pitman arm on this 1997 Chevy Blazer. Uh, it's got some play in it. It's about five years old, the uh, pitman arm. I've done it before. I've tried to lay out as many tools that I could think of up front that I'm going to need. You're going to need a some kind of oil or catch pan because um, we're going to be removing the gearbox to do this one. Um, if you have impact tools, that's going to be very beneficial. If not, you're going to need some breaker bars. Um, this is my uh, pneumatic impact wrench here. The socket for taking off the actual pitman arm uh, is going to be a 36 millimeter for the nut, I believe. Once we get in there, I'll know for sure. Obviously, some sockets. I got some line wrenches because you'll need to disconnect the power steering um, lines on the actual gearbox. I have an air ratchet or regular ratchet will do. Screwdriver, flathead. Uh, I have an air hammer, or you can use like a, a pickle fork. Uh, or even a ball joint separator. This is to actually separate the uh, pitman arm, the one end of it, from the intermediate steering link. Uh, pitman arm puller, power steering fluid, and of course you got your good old-fashioned uh, PB blaster here in case we need it to loosen anything up. Um, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and get started. I'm going to pause in between each section. This will give me the opportunity to reposition the camera without making you seasick in the process. Uh, obviously the first thing we need to do is uh, support the vehicle. We have it jacked up here with a jack stand. I have a brick behind the rear right wheel just to keep it from moving. Uh, we got the wheel off the ground here. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is um, we're gonna climb under it here and that's gonna give us the access to the splash shield um, or brush guard, whichever they prefer to call it. Uh, or air dam, probably 20 different names here. So when I climb under here, this uh, this shield here is going to have to come off. It's got some fasteners, as you can see on it. Uh, those are 15 millimeter. Um, mine has uh, supposed to be six, but mine's only got about three because they've all ripped out the threads, and I have it zip tied over there. So we're going to go ahead and remove that shield, and that's going to give us access to the pitman arm. Now, to get an idea where the pitman arm actually is, let's see if I can get up off the ground here, and I'll show you. If you come through the driver wheel here. And uh, I'm gonna try to do this without banging this camera up. Come through the driver wheel well here. Um, probably won't see it. Uh, it's hard to say if it's gonna pick it up. Um, the pitman arm is in there. Actually, yeah, we're right on it. So you're looking at the pitman arm. Uh, and that connects there to the intermediate link, steering link, and then connects to the gearbox. Now, the bolts for the gearbox um, one is right here, that one. And then you have that one, and then you have uh, this one right there. So basically have those three uh, bolts right there. One, two, three. That holds the actual um, gearbox to the frame. Uh, so those will have to come out too. Um, but first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna get you up on a dry po tripod, and then we'll start ripping some things apart here. So hold tight. All right, guys, we're back here. We're gonna go ahead and rip this uh, shield off the bottom here, this uh, brush guard. Get some air tools ready to go. I'm just gonna snip this. Uh, I just have a uh, zip tie, like I said, on there holding that in place. These screws are pretty much hammered, so we'll just go ahead and take this off. Okay. Alright guys, now the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and take the wheel off. Uh, we've got a 19 millimeter here. Ah. 
got a little dish here. I'm going to just put my lug nuts in here. Drink too much coffee today. I got the jitters. It's much easier to do this job when you got air tools. I will tell you that up front. And take the wheel, lift it straight off so you don't bend your vacuum plate, and just move this guy out of the room. Some guys prefer to lay this under the vehicle, which will then uh, give you a little extra support. So now we got the wheel off. We're going to go ahead up top, and we're going to. Uh, start taking the stuff off, to up, off top that we need to do in order to access the um, power steering lines. All right guys, we got you propped up on the engine here. Uh, I'm gonna have, go ahead and take this air box out. Uh, I'm gonna disconnect the uh, air temp sensor here. It's just these little clips, you just gotta be careful uh, with these little tabs, you don't wanna break them off, so you wanna be gentle, especially on an older vehicle like this, they tend to get a little bit fragile. Uh, this just pulls up. You can just flap it out of the way. Um, there's a flathead here. I'm hoping this is picking up that uh, it, we're going to take off here. Uh, off the actual uh, hose here, the air dam hose. And then so that should be loosened up. Now the next thing we're going to do, um, now mine is uh, the incorrect size because I lost the nut. But if you look straight down here, um, right where my screwdriver is, there's a nut there. I believe mine is going to be an 11 millimeter. I think the factory was 13 or 10, but truthfully, it's been so long that I can't remember because I had to replace this with an extra one I had laying around. Yeah, mine is an 11, but I have no idea what yours will be. Uh, just pure simple fact that it's been so long you know, since I've done this. So I'm going to try to take that off the air ratchet. If not, we'll hit it with the impact. Yeah, my fingers are greasy already. I start out wearing gloves when I do these jobs and I quickly end up taking them off. <laughs> Just because I can't work with them. You know, some guys like to stay clean. I try, but it's hard. Alright, so that took that right off. Excellent. I'm going to put that over in our little magnetic dish that I have pre-set up. Okay, we'll go ahead and we're going to take this air dam off here. Air box, we're just going to carefully maneuver around the coolant hose here, radiator hose. We're just going to lift straight up this whole thing out of here. Sit that aside in a safe place where it won't get busted. Then the next part, uh, it might be a little tricky to record, but I'm going to do my absolute best. So I'm going to reposition the camera and show you the next part here in just a second. All right, guys, I'm just going to quickly show you here what we're doing um, so that you know what's happening. Uh, it's going to be hard for me to position the camera where we need it to be. So what we're doing is we're coming down here on the driver's side here. And this is the steering shaft here uh, that goes up into the actual steering wheel. This plastic cover has come off. There's just these little tiny clips on here. If you get a flathead screwdriver and carefully, you can pry this apart. And then that's going to give us access to the uh, power steering lines in which that we'll need to crack loose. And then we're going to disconnect the steering shaft here, which then telescopes back up into the vehicle towards the firewall. Uh, once that's disconnected, this is, you know, a good portion of the way through what, you know, we got to take off up here. So I'm going to try to set you up here uh, somewhere where you can see, so hopefully you'll be able to. All right, guys, I got you set up on tripod. I can see this. Uh, <laughs> having to buy a new camera today. I can just see it now. <laughs> so we're going to try not to knock the camera off here. Um, so we're just going to go down in here and we're going to try to just pull this little plastic thing up right here. And as you can see, it's been off so many times that it just pretty much comes right off. So that's a plus. It makes it a little easier here. And you can kind of grab a hold of it. Now this was just running, so I'm trying not to grab a hold of the exhaust here. And if this gets stuck down here, it's not a big deal. I can easily grab a hold of it. We'll just sit that aside. Uh, next thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to figure out what size that uh, nut is on the... Uh, it holds the, uh, or the bolt, I should say, that holds this end down here. This holds the steering shaft in. I believe, I'm going to try to do this from memory, I believe it was an odd size. I think it was a, uh, I want to say it was a 12. It's been a long time, guys, like I said. No, it's definitely not a 12. It's too loose. Let's try it millimeter. Uh, let's try the, uh, let's try the, uh, 
try the 11 here and see if that fits it. Yeah, that seems to do the job. So I don't know if this air ratchet is going to be strong enough to take this guy off, but we're going to creep it down in there and see what we can do here. It might be too big to get this in there, actually. I might be just doing old-fashioned tools today, guys. You know, oh, you know, I'll go ahead and make, make a video here, and then half the video is me trying to get my tools together. Alright, let's just see if I can get the impact down in there on it. If not, I will go get a ratchet and quit being lazy. Now, I'm going to get the ratchet. I'll be back, guys. Okay, I'm back. Got the ratchet here. We're going to go ahead down on there and see if we can crack that loose. I need another extension. Jeez. I'm short. Well, technically I'm not short, but... There we go. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and unscrew that. I'm going to put it in an extremely safe place because I have no idea where in the world I would get one of these today if I were to lose it. Okay, and then the next part is we're going to go ahead and try to telescope this out of here. I don't know. If it, oh, that was easy. As you can see, that just pushes up in there. And it should be out of the way there. So, so that was cool. That worked out quite well. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, we're going to get on these guys here, these two lines here, these power steering lines. Um, I'm going to see if I can try to maneuver this stuff out of the way a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. Let me spray them down real quick. Yeah. Fortunately, this battery is dying pretty quickly on this camera, which kind of stinks because I just got done buying a battery for it, but I haven't used this camera. Most of you guys follow my videos. I haven't made one in a while. So I'm going to put a drip pan under the vehicle, it doesn't blow away. Alright. See if we can get down in there. Alright, let's take a gamble. What do we think size this is going to be, guys? Let's start with bigger, bigger sizes first. Definitely a big one. Let's see what size we got here. I might be using a regular wrench on this today instead of one of these line wrenches, I have a feeling. Can't even see what I'm doing, unfortunately. Uh, five eighths, isn't it? Five eighths doesn't seem to, it seems to be it, or I'm sorry, 11 16 seems to be it, but the problem is it's just such a tight area, I can't seem to get a, a wrench on it. So, what I might be doing here is uh, seeing if I can uh, just get a regular wrench that's not a boxed in wrench. So, alright, hold tight guys, I'll get some more tools. Alright guys, now I'm a little bit more prepared. I've got an 18 millimeter wrench here. 
we're gonna go ahead and uh, I got the one cracked loose right here that's probably hard for you to see um, so we're gonna go ahead and just keep on working on that I'm sure all you're seeing probably right now is my big arm but, yeah I'm filming this because you know I couldn't really fill, find a lot of videos out there um, you know, I've done these before, these Pittman arms. Um, but like I said, I couldn't really find a whole lot of videos when I was looking to do it originally. And, uh, so I decided, you know, like I said, I apologize. There's not a whole lot to see right now. I'm just trying to get this line out of here. I already have, like I mentioned in the previous clip, I have my, uh, hand ready to go underneath. see if I can get it to, yeah, I play around here, I seem to be able to get it by hand, and I just gotta keep wiggling it. Well, we're actually on the actual steering box is what we're doing here. Alright, so that line's out, it's gonna probably leak there. I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of pull that up out of the side here. I'm gonna try to tuck it under this other junk out of here, just that way. I can get to this guy. Now we're going to go ahead and crack the other one loose. Okay. Alright. I think I had to spin that out. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. Uh, like I said, it's really hard to see down there. I hope you're making out something. All I'm doing is, like I said, I'm taking these lines out of here. All right, beautiful. That one we can actually just kind of, probably just knock it down and let it drain into the, into that pan. Okay, so that's the biggest part there uh, as far as getting down there to them lines. Um, let's see if I can try to pick you up and give you a closer view here. Um, so basically, like I said, if you, I don't know how well you can make out that, but move this line here. So we just took those lines right out of the gear box there, the steering box. Uh, so now we're going to go underneath and we're going to use the air hammer and the pickle fork to try to uh, separate those uh, steering link from the actual pitman arm. So we're going to do that next. Okay, I'm going to try to reposition these pans a little bit here. Seem to be leaking everywhere. Alright, the next thing we're going to do I'm going to crawl under here and I'm going to try to uh, break that steering link loose here. Uh, so we're going to do that next. Alright, I'm not going to probably be able to film this very well, but if you look here, that we're going to put the pickle fork right in there, okay? And I'm going to try to hit it with the, uh, hit it with the air hammer and and the pickle fork there. Uh, but first we had to crack that nut loose. It's right there, that little castle nut that's on the bottom of it down there. Uh, so we're gonna take that cotter pin out. We're gonna crack that loose and then I'll be back in a minute then after I crack these loose. Okay YouTube, as you can see we're back. We got the gearbox out. Uh, I have to charge the battery for a little bit. My battery is uh, needing a good thorough all day just plugged in type of charge done to it unfortunately haven't had the time to do that. Um, so I did miss the part of actually removing the entire gearbox assembly out. Like I said, there was that nut I showed you with the cotter pin, remove the cotter pin, um, remove the nut off of it, and then uh, the castle nut. Once you remove that, then what I did was I used my uh, air hammer, or if you have a long pickle fork, but I have a pickle fork for my air hammer, and I basically put it in there and, and hit it and it separated this from the steering link, the bottom of the pitman arm. Um, so once you do that, the next thing you need to do is you're going to need a 32 millimeter, and we're going to put that right on there. Um, we're going to hit a couple quick uh, hits of the uh, penetrating on it, give it all that we can. Um, once we do that, uh, we'll get our impact here, and we're going to go ahead and just hammer away at this guy here. Amazing, 700 foot-pounds is what this uh, earthquake uh, pneumatic impact wrench is, and I'll be up front with you, I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's probably my favorite tool. Uh, a buddy of mine gave it to me, 
he wasn't using it anymore. I was like, yeah, heck yeah, I'll take it, you know? Um, so this is gonna be on there pretty tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get our pitman arm puller. I have, uh, the one I have came from Advance has a 19 millimeter. And what this needs to do is you need to center it right on the stud coming out of the gearbox. Now it's very important to take note of the orientation that this thing is in because it will need to go into the same orientation to go back on. So uh, I'm going to center that the best you can like that. And we're just going to change this to tighten. really on there. <laughs> we may be getting the breaker bar out for this guy. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, yeah, I'm thinking we may be uh, getting the breaker bar out for this. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll let the uh, air compressor build up for a couple minutes and then uh, see where we're at. Uh, and then uh, I'll hit it again and if that doesn't work then we'll get the breaker bar out. Well, I had to implore some uh, unusual methods to get this off, as you could see in the last clip, uh, which was about 10-15 minutes ago when I stopped recording. The uh, I couldn't get the pitman arm. I mean, I was hitting it with a 700 impact uh, gun here, and I also was putting a breaker bar on it, propping it up between those blocks. I was using a weight bench bar. Uh, that puller would not pull that off. Apparently, when I did it last time, I must have hammered that pitman on there too tight. Uh, so what I had to do was implore some other methods. I used a good old-fashioned grinder with a cutoff wheel, and I cut a slit. I was careful not to go into the actual pitman, uh, or into the actual gearbox um, that comes out there. And um, as you can see, and uh, I, it just comes right off now. I just sat it back on there so I can remember the orientation. But uh, we'll go ahead and put the new one on now, so. All right, let's get the new one and go ahead and put it on. Uh, Uh, video it isn't turning out the way I was hoping it would and uh, typically they don't because you always run into these problems this is uh, quote unquote real world <laughs> uh, I love watching uh, Erica's videos on uh, South Main Auto on YouTube it's another good channel if you want to check that out um, fortunately this vehicle doesn't give you enough clearance to uh, to do the uh, pitman arm on the vehicle you have to take it off so what we're going to do here we're going to go ahead and throw it on the ground. And uh, here's new set pitman arm. So we're going to put there, it comes with a little Zerk fitting bleeder. We're going to put that in there. Let's see if I can move this stuff out of the way. Let's see if we can put that in here. Well, the second part is part of the job is getting the uh, getting the uh, box or the uh, plastic bag that holds the uh, cotter pin and the zerk fitting. Apparently, they're afraid you'll open it. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and put that in there. I'm just going to screw that in there. It's actually got it on the side, which is nice. All right, so got that in there. I'm just going to tighten that up there with a wrench real fast.
I'm also going to go ahead and uh, pre-grease this before I put it on the vehicle. I found that it's uh, on these it's easier to get to while it's off the vehicle, so might as well take advantage of that. Go ahead and sit that there. Try to do this on camera is always fun. Alright, so it's just starting to come out the side, so that should be enough. That way I know I don't have to worry about doing it once I get it on the vehicle. Uh, so, of course this thing's going to... Just had it off there, now it's making me look like an idiot. It's a little warm. Let me uh, pound it away at it there. Okay. Now we should be in the green. Go ahead and find that nut there, whatever I did with it. Clean it up with some brake clean. Yeah, this is what I ran into last time. These are a real bugger to put on, guys. You know, uh, on this particular setup. Uh, let's just double check where we're at. That's right. Uh, maybe we'll just use the old one to give it a nice up tap, get it down a little bit. Let's see if we can get that nut on there. Yeah, it's still up there pretty good. Let's see if we can at least get some thread started on it. Yeah. Or some other methods as usual. Now I remember what I used. Uh, now I remember what I used this for. This was to pound the new one on last time. <laughs> That's what it was used for. You've seen other videos where I talk about I mushroom this sock out. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that is how I did it. Sure, someone out there is cringing right now. <laughs> what are you banging on the gearbox for? <laughs> well, you're not me. This ain't your vehicle. I'm just showing you how I've been able to get these to do this before. Don't like it? Don't do it this way. It's just a nice, helpful video to help people out there that want to give it a try themselves. I don't think it's going anywhere. <laughs> so.
Now what we're going to do is we're going to put it back up in the vehicle. I'm going to clean it off the best I can too because it's kind of dirty, especially from uh, working on it here. So I'm going to clean it off and I'm going to lift it back up into the vehicle and uh, put those fasteners back in.